Well, with us now is uh, David Bainbridge, the International Director at Tier Fund, a Christian aid charity. David, good morning to you. Morning. This is such an important period, isn't it? Because this is the moment where lives are going to be lost if the aid isn't getting there quickly enough. Absolutely. This is a critical time. And, and just to emphasise the sheer scale of the task. So when the typhoon tore through to the Philippines, it was 300 miles wide. So we're dealing with a massive geographical area for the aid to get in and then for it to be effectively distributed over such a large area. And time is clearly of the essence. Organisation is crucial to that. The Philippines government takes over all charge, but what happens on the ground? Which charities are taking the lead? Who's helping who? So there's a very clear coordination system that is always in place now for these very large-scale humanitarian crises. The government has a central role to play in ensuring coordination and their lead role is absolutely essential. But the United Nations agencies, particularly a group called OCHA, they provide coordination to make sure that the individual aid agencies such as Tier Fund and the other members of the Disaster Emergency Committee are all working within an agreed plan to ensure the right coverage and the right priorities are addressed. The DEC put out the television advertisements last night. In terms of the aid money coming in, obviously you can't do anything without the money coming in, but so far the signs are the British public are, are very keen to do what they can. No, it's been an absolutely phenomenal response, really, really encouraging. But to underscore, the scale of the task ahead is, is overwhelming. As I said, the numbers affected, I think the latest estimates are 11 million people who have been affected by this crisis. And not only the short-term immediate relief needs like food, water, medical care, uh, but the longer term process of recovery for them. People will be keen to get back on their feet, to have their livelihoods re-established. And this is a long term task as well as an immediate priority. Things like electricity are a long way off. The immediate needs are water, medicine and food. Very basic things, yeah, shelter. Um, and, and of course the concern now is that without those basic needs being provided and if people are still living out in the open and with no care, proper sanitation, then the disease of, uh, the risk of disease outbreaks, um, further problems, particularly for children and vulnerable people within the communities, is all the more of a concern. There, there, there's always a frustration at the speed of this, the initial response in, in huge events like this, perhaps without understanding just the huge logistical problem that is faced. Exactly, and even the, the stories we're hearing are often from the larger cities, the urban centres, um, after the, the typhoon struck, our local partners, uh, church-based partners, said they're going to set out on motorbikes to try and reach the more remote parts on some of these islands and said that they may take three days just to get there, just because of the, the problems of now basic road access into the more remote parts. Now, without the aid getting through as early as some would wish, what are the biggest risks? I mean, obviously anybody's been wounded, there are concerns there, but what about children, others who are going without water and food, how long can they last? So it will be concerns about the, the risk of um, disease spreading and malnutrition amongst children, um, protection as well for women and girls if they're having to stay in evacuation centres, um, their personal safety is a concern as well. Um, and what, what about on the ground, I know you've, you, you, you've covered events like that this before, what is the greatest problem? Is it identifying the, most, the areas in most need or is there a communication issue? How, how does it work practically? I think a key here is the level of um, targeting. So it's, it's ensuring that um, the people in greatest need, the most vulnerable, are reached. And often those are people who aren't on the streets or making a noise. Um, it's the elderly, it's um, children or it's mothers with um, a large number of kids at home that they're trying to care for. And so the, the role of, of um, aid agencies like Tier Fund and the other members of the DEC is very much to ensure that as that essential relief arrives, um, it is going out to the right people, the people that have the greatest need are prioritised. In real terms, how long have you and the other aid agencies got to make a difference? It's very hard to tell um, because of um, all of these uncertainties um, the risk of disease outbreaks, that could be within days. It all depends on the, um, the elements, if there's more rainfall, if sanitation becomes more of a concern. 
Um, it is a race against time, and the sooner we can get aid operations underway, the better. So if someone's watching you right now and thinking, well, I, I didn't donate money last night, and actually the aid does seem to be arriving and there's not much else I can do, what's the message? The message is, please respond. Um, the appeal is ongoing. The scale of this disaster is unprecedented. You know, the Philippines are used to having typhoons. This happens every year, every season. Um, but this is on a totally unprecedented scale and we really need all the support that there is available. David, it's good of you to come in. Thank you very much. David Thank Bainbridge you. from Tier Fund. Thank you.